Today, we're gonna look at how to use Midjourney's new AI video generation tool. I'll walk you through how to actually use the tool, highlight some of the standout features, and then I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison to some of the top AI video generators in the space. For a while now, Midjourney has led the space, and when word got out that it had an AI video model, well, expectations have been high. But here's the big question. Can Midjourney's tool compete with some of the best AI video models out there? Well, today we're gonna find out. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that you can download a free Midjourney style guide by clicking the link in the description. Let's hop in. Okay, so to use the model, it's actually pretty simple. If you're familiar with Midjourney at all, you just log on to Midjourney, you go to their homepage, and you'll see this Explore tab here. Uh, it's pretty much the same as normal, but now almost every image is a video. Click on your Imagine bar up here or head over to Create. So if you wanna create something, you just click over here to the uh, Imagine tab. Um, you can add an image as a reference uh, or you can click the settings here and you have a, a wide range of options here. You can pick the aspect ratio, such as the landscape, square or portrait. Uh, if you're making films, I recommend you stay in the landscape and at 16 by nine. Um, you can pick the model that you want to use, standard or raw. I like to use raw most of the times for my images. Um, and then you can pick your your version, which is the which model you're going to use. I like to go with the, with the latest model, which is seven. Um, and you can pick to either have it draft to create really fast images, or you can click in standard mode, which will take a little bit more time in order to, to replicate. So we're just gonna stick with draft for now. You have some aesthetics over here. You can pick your stylization, uh, your weirdness factor um, or variety. Um, I kind of have it generally set here for, for uh, mine. Um, and then I like to use the, the turbo speed uh, for, for most projects here. I'm gonna type in a simple image that I would normally have taken into runway or to another video generator and just see what this comes out. My prompt here is going to be a 1980s robot who is playing back basketball on a cul-de-sac with human friends. 1980s, film stock is Kodak Porta 800. I have all my other settings set uh, correctly. Okay, so as you see, it came up with a couple different options here really quick. Uh, I'm gonna just rerun it one more time just to give me a little bit more options. But as you can see here, the image generation part is, is fairly fast. So um, I like this one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on enhance, which will then take it out of draft mode and make it into a more enhanced and uh, more filmic and, and more cinematic um, image here. So looking through these, I'm gonna go ahead and click through. Um, we'll go with this one here. That one's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click upscale. You still like to upscale, especially for video, so that you can have the highest quality possible. Um, but while that does that, you can see there's so many different actions that we can take with, with Midjourney. Um, you can do a very subtle or very strong, which changes uh, the image position and uh, or varies it very slightly. Uh, upscale, which is pretty obvious, it makes the resolution better. Um, you can rerun the prompt, um, or you can go into edit mode, which we're not gonna really dive into more today. Uh, but then down here, as you see, uh, we have uh, animate image now, and they have auto mode, which is create a video starting from this image. So Midjourney just looks at it, and then it will turn it into a video. So you can create a video in low motion, which means create a video from this image with a low amount of motion, or high motion, create a video from this image with a high amount of motion. So we'll test those um, in a minute here. We also have manual mode. And with manual mode, you can create an image uh, and then use a prompt for it. So um, low motion, high motion are kind of the same here. Um, so let's go see what our uh, final upscaled image looks like. You know, this is good enough for now. So we're just gonna right off the bat, we're just gonna click in and hit low motion and one for high motion on auto and see what that uh, comes out. For manual, we're gonna hit low motion. As you see, it actually makes like a, a video start frame here and then it puts a prompt up here. So what I'm gonna do is, um, it already has motion low there. I'm gonna go ahead and just after this, say the robot kicks the ball off screen. And then we'll see what that looks like. And then we're gonna do one in high motion as well. Okay, so then we can go here to our create tab. And as you'll see, it immediately started creating these videos super fast. So, I mean, immediately it kind of built out a world a little bit. It's not truly a world model, but as you can see, let's, let's click through and watch some of these. I mean, he's dribbling the ball, goes and 
gives a, a almost a layup to somebody else. That's pretty amazing right off the bat here. We'll go up, watch the next one. So a little slow dribble, but the kids are playing basketball. The background characters look somewhat or mostly coherent, um, which is pretty amazing compared to some of the other models out there. Usually the background characters kind of fall apart. So this is the third generation in that series. And he's going to go and toss it to it. Look like another court off there. And this is four. So he's taking his ball and he's going home with this. Uh, but, you know, right off the bat, really good or fairly good generation here. Um, so that was our first series. That's low motion. Um, we're going to go up to the auto for high motion. So we're start here. Oh, he is bouncing. People are moving around fast. And he it loves to go to that right direction for some reason. Uh, but, I mean, this looks like any neighborhood in the 1980s. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Oh, he's going straight for that, that basket. And he kind of missed it. You know, I think he needs a little bit more training data of how to actually shoot. You see the, the characters out in the background here are, are also, they're all kind of brought to life. Uh, this is the fourth one on this series. And uh, that was very, very close. Very, very close to actually shooting in the basket. Um, really complicated motion to do with AI right now. Okay, now this is where we gave it a prompt on low motion, where the prompt was um, that the robot kicks the ball off the screen here. So it bounces a little bit. People are slowly moving around, but he almost made the basket there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And he kind of kicks it, and still, we just we cannot get it in. Although it's a pretty awesome soccer kick. You can see he actually puts a little bit of backspin on it when he kicks it. Oh my gosh, that's that's kind of cool. That's really amazing, actually. Okay, a couple bounces here. And kick. Oh, looks like he finally made it. And up and in. Uh, close enough. This one is high motion with our prompt here. So you can see he doesn't actually do the kicking of the ball off screen, but he's kind of like taunting it. But the... The players, the background players, just actually look pretty good and pretty real and lifelike. There's one more test I like to do always, and that's with hands motion, right? Um, a lot of models don't know how to actually interact with hands. They're getting better at it, um, but just seeing hand interaction and hand movement is always a, a big deal for me. Okay, so we have the image of this hand here, and I'm gonna do, um, and I'm gonna do a manual motion i'm going to do manual low motion here and it's going to be the fingers move and the hands turn over and look at the palms so we'll try that in low motion and then we'll try that again uh in high motion okay and i'd say in under a minute it came back and as you can see the hands are moving it shows the palms it didn't like wiggle the fingers but it it does go from a hand a shot like this to them turning over and looking at the hands or from my perspective like this. And all of them look great. The fingers stay the same, the lighting changes with them. Um, let's see what the high motion ones kind of came out with. This one does more with the fingers and the hands kind of moving. Yeah, so I would, I would choose this one. Um, I think that it, you know, so the fingers are a little weird after it turns over, like the shape of it, but that could just be the person's finger too. I don't think it looks too weird compared to uh, uh, you know, what AI video hands used to look like. Okay, so how does Midjourney compare to other models? Well, we'll start with our first video here of our hands turning over. I think this was my favorite one. Lighting stays the same. It's pretty coherent um, in, in all of it. Um, looks pretty good. Fingers are, are great. Okay, so here it is in Flow and VO3. And I mean, he's moving his hands. He's flexing them. The prompt adherence is there. Um, I mean, so far, Mid Journey is very, very close, but VO is 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 pretty good here. Turn is a little slower, and it it just kind of moves the hands a little bit. It's still moving; fingers are still all the same. Um, I still think VO three wins here. So here in Cling, you can see it does turn its hands over too. Um, I would say that this is fairly close to Mid Journey's output right here. Um, let's go back and let's let's look at that. 
it's it's very very similar here so it's really hard to tell honestly which one is is best um between uh, cling and midjourney but i think overall vo3 wins this one um especially when it's up uh, upscaled to the 1080p it's got more life it's got more movement um in in the hands okay so here's our shot of the man who's jumping through the black portal and he comes out the other side as a frog and as you see here it works pretty well uh the man jumps through the portal and then in the portal kind of warps into a frog and we kind of do this nice zoom in but it keeps the animation style which is really awesome it doesn't change the style it doesn't change the look and the feel and it keeps it relatively in the same world um i think that this is a really good start for midjourney so obviously you know it didn't he didn't jump through the portal to the back side of it but you know maybe with some more prompting if that's what i really wanted it to be we could get there but um this is a very complicated thing to ask any model to do and i'm i'm pretty happy with this outcome so let's jump over to runway and see how runway did with that same ask here and the man jumps in and kind of hangs on and <laughs> does like a snap zoom into this frog which it still remains a animation but uh it's very muddled up here if you can see as soon as he jumps in he kind of like merges together and yeah not very impressed here uh, but let's go ahead and check out how the same clip worked in vo okay this one is actually really awesome uh didn't do the snap zoom in into the frog at the end but it did what we asked but it turned that circle into a portal of its own it was really cool how the circle kind of went into the ground and came up that was awesome but that's a little different than what uh you know we were looking for so i would say quality wise that mid journey and vo3 were the best um but my personal preference on this one is going to be uh mid journey okay so here's a steven spielberg type shot of uh, or like a stranger things type shot of these kids riding a bike in the neighborhood with like a little pink cute alien thing and i mean the bike movements are great the the pedaling looks pretty consistent um it keeps the the style in the world the same and it even gives some life uh, and it, oh dang it even goes in and out of focus to the to the character as it gets closer to the camera which is something that would be true to life uh, if you kind of miss your mark or miss the focus plane okay i did the same shot over in minimax hilu and it's pretty good as well the kids keep the bicycles moving and, and even stop pedaling at some point and pick it back up it's pretty natural um i love how the character here is kind of moving back and forth and then goes out of focus and the camera kind of pans over to the kid on the right although these two are very very close i'm gonna go with minimax's high luo o2 okay now this is uh this is the anime one that we extended uh multiple times where she's supposed to smell the flower and put it back and as you can see here she kind of she talks and she kind of like licks it it looks like from the back um but there is a smell right there and there is a lot of motion here so i think it, it did a pretty good job in keeping the the scene you know the same um so let's pop over to runway as well okay so runway she actually smells the flowers but it kind of falls apart and then does like a, a backward zoom um it does this really weird thing like right around here you'll start to see it like wonk a little bit um you know i think with some some prompting that we could go a long way with this this one if we um wanted to change our prompt up a little bit or give it very specific directions you know and i i like the mid journey one a little bit better although the prompt adherence uh for her for the action here of smelling was was better in, in runway now let's jump over to cling okay now the woman smells the flowers i mean that's almost perfect the flowers moving uh, she smells it has a reaction to the smell um, no real movement in the background but uh, yeah I'm gonna have to say cling wins wins this one okay so now we know how it works but what is the cost of mid-journey video you know for launch they're starting off with web only or we'll be charging about eight times more for a video job than an image job and each job will produce four five second videos but surprisingly, this means uh, it's only about the same cost as an upscale or about one image worth of cost per second of video. Um, this is amazing, surprising, and over 25 times cheaper than what the market has shipped before. So your subscription stays the same with Midjourney Video. Uh, for right now, it's using up some fast hours. If you are a, a pro subscriber, you can see, and I believe there's a video relax mode for pro users. So if you do have a pro plan and you're using the video relax mode, let us know in the comments below. 
Okay, so Midjourney's done a really good job with this new model, and I'm super impressed with what it looks like right out of the bat. The world stay the same. A lot of it is consistent. The movement is is there. Camera movement is there. Acting is there for the most part. For for V1, I would say that this is going in the right direction. Is it a hundred percent the a VO3 killer or a runway killer or any sort of killer? I don't believe in that. I believe every model has its own purpose and can work in its own way and alongside each each other ones. But I would have to say that, you know, overall fidelity is not as high as like a VO3 or, or a Kling uh, 2.1 or the new Mini Max model. But in general, the worlds that we're able to build with inside of it are just absolutely amazing and i think that this is going to be that first step in that general world model or world world model um that we've been talking about in the space for quite some time so what are your experiences with mid journey video have you had good outputs have you had terrible outputs i want to hear your thoughts put them in the comments below so whether this is your first time dealing with mid journey or your mid journey pro we do have a mid journey style guide that is linked in the description below so until next time i'm gabe michael be well do good and make awesome things